up with a word of prayer, uh, but, and, then, and then I'm going to introduce the Druitt family to you, and then we're going to get kicked right off. Amen? Amen? Father, thank you, Lord, for loving us. God has uh, alluded this morning. We thank you, Father, who proved your love through your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, now tonight, Lord, I pray that, I, that our hearts are, God, can get still before you. And dear God, that we will listen attentively. Lord, and God, just uh, pray, Lord, for the ministry in soul. Thank you, Lord, for the Druid family. God, I thank you, Lord, for their long-standing stand for you. And God, for what they've meant to so many over the years. Amen. Father, thank you for this time tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I first met originally the Druitt family in the early 90s as I was serving at Roland Road Baptist Church. Um, Mr. Druitt here and his wife and son. That would have been, you know, 92, 94 in that time period. Have uh, uh, Through the years, uh, 18 years ago, we think. Uh, rekindled that in, in a conference, Bible conference down in Alexandria, Louisiana. And then, of course, um, Sean um, have, have run into him several times through the last several years. I think I've mentioned all about the last three years at least, maybe longer. You, you've been down to the pastor's conference there um, in, in Cargan, Texas that I go to every December. And uh, he, he's, he's there every year and have been to my church there in Arkansas two times at least, if not three. And so anyway, we've been trying to work out a way that in a time that he could be here. And uh, there was a cancellation this evening. He was in Natchez this morning. He and his family, and they're here with us tonight. Amen. Brother Sean, Amen. so glad to have you. Thank you so much, Brother Kyle. I want to be a blessing. I'll do a little bit of talking after <coughs> we sing a little bit, okay? Upon the Isle of Patmos, a man was cast one day. As he was left alone to die, he began to pray. The Holy Ghost came on him, the Spirit it came down. He began to write about the things he saw. The Revelator's name was John. John the Revelator saw Jerusalem coming down. Yes, it was John. John John turned around to see if the voice he had heard was what it seemed to be. Just like many waters, a great trumpet sound. He said, I am the first and the last, the revelator wrote it down. John the revelator saw Jerusalem coming down. Yes, Around. He saw feet like brass, eyes like fire, heard a great voice sing. John the Revelator wrote by the city of God. John the Revelator saw Jerusalem coming down. John the Revelator, and when he looked around, he saw feet like brass, eyes like fire. Told his faithful disciples, meet me over on the other side. I will meet you in the waters you have crossed. But in the midst of stormy sailing, what do we do? They fearfully cry. Out of the darkness came his answer. Meet me over on the other side. Do not fear the raging waters, trust in me and face the storm. I will calm the winds around you in my hand. You're safe from harm. When she's rolling and the wind stop blowing, that's my child in the midst of the tide. Be not afraid of the tossing billow. Over on the other side. 
singing to his children, meet me over on the other side. Though the storms of life are many, we'll reach our goal. He is watching for the storm clouds, he will be our Savior and God. Can't you hear him gently back cry? Meet me over on the other side. I do not fear the raging waters, trust in me and face the storm. I will calm the winds around you in my hand, you're safe from harm. Well, if she's rolling and the wind stop blowing, that's my child in the midst of the tide. Be not afraid of the tossing billow. Or on the other side. Oh, do not fear the raging waters, trust in me and face the storm. I will calm the winds around you in my hand, you're safe from harm. Rolling in the wind, stop blowing. That's my child in the midst of the tide. Be not afraid of oh, the in below. Below. Friends that are all the way from Sardis, Mississippi. Do y'all know where Sardis, yeah. Mississippi is yeah. at? Right. Well, if you go to Memphis, you can't miss it, right. hardly. <laughs> uh, but they're they're all the way down here from up there. That's Miss Ruth and Kim Crawford, and we so appreciate them. They're they're going to go see Duck Dynasty, I think, tomorrow. <laughs> and uh, so they didn't come see us. They came to see. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. They're. They're dear friends of ours. And hey, I know I got a button missing, okay? So just to let y'all know that I'm not ignorant about this button <laughs> being gone. This morning I got up to sing and I went to button my jacket and it just popped off. So uh, until I get home, I can't do anything about it, okay? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, we have some uh, uh, friends, too, that we met uh, at least 30 years ago. It, four, I'm sorry, 40 40 uh, at Twin City Baptist Church. Uh, they have they brought in an old record that's 40 years old that we recorded. And uh, I, I, I told them, I said, if that thing ain't wore out, I'm going to be offended. You know, <laughs> If they'd have brought in a record and it was still sealed, yeah. they'd been bad. Yeah. But, <laughs> but it's pretty bad looking. It's ugly. So I appreciate that. I appreciate it. Uh, this is uh, my daughter, Catherine. She's 13. We got Molly, 16. Samuel, 17. Fixing to be, uh, well, in about three weeks, he'll be 18. And that's the big age, you know. The big age. He'll find out. There ain't nothing to it. Uh, but anyway, uh, if you're a Christian, that is. It, uh, <laughs> Uh, but anyway, we're, we're so glad to be here, Brother brother Kyle. Uh, I don't remember the first time I met you, you know, uh, I mean, back years and years ago. I, I, the first time I met you uh, of late was at the Brother Moss's meeting over yeah. there. Uh, so I appreciate y'all letting us come. There's a song that we recorded uh, 42 years ago, and it's, it was such a terrific song. I said, you know what? I have got to re-record that. It's called, I've Already Won the War. Yeah. This old world's a battlefield where we must fight, he said. Commander is Almighty God. There's no greater near or far. I may lose a battle now and then, but I've already won the war. When you're afraid. 
and all alone. You think that no one cares when the daily task of getting by has caused you to despair. Just take God's word into your heart and oh. You may lose a battle now and then, but the victory's in God's hands. You can have this confidence that helps to see me through. If you'll but give. Of you. Oh, he doesn't promise that it's easy, but salvation with some scars. I may lose a battle. Goodbye is not the
about 50 percent of of the engagements that we have are, are myself as a soloist and they only come with me about half the time and and uh, they only travel with me really in the state uh, of louisiana and sometimes we'll go a little bit over the border we'll be in magnolia arkansas we we're talking to that to the crawfords about that uh, we'll be over there, but we don't travel as a family very extensively, 
And uh, sometimes I'll have somebody call me from way off and said, can your family come sing? And, and uh, I'll say uh, the same thing I just told you. And you say, well, why is that, you know, well, part of the reason of that is that uh, uh, I grew up having no life. <laughs> and I, I want my kids to have a life. Uh, we, we sang 200 dates a year for 22 years straight. And, uh, oh, I met, I met lots of girls. I just, it was hello and goodbye. And I got married when I was 37. And uh, I mean, you talk about a you talk about a, a life on the road, wide open, full time. And so I th I said, you know, I want my kids. I want them to have a school life. I want them to have a sports life. And I want them to have, if they want a you know a boyfriend or girlfriend, whatever else, you know, I want them to you know just have somewhat of a normal life. So that's why we don't. Main reason why we don't travel real real extensively far off and and all that because I'm messed up psychologically and I don't want them messed up psychologically. <laughs> hey, just ask my wife. Uh, just ask my wife, Kim. She'll tell you I'm messed up. Oh, man, my wife's back home with our eight-year-old uh, daughter and you see the picture up there uh, of my littlest uh, She's nine girl. Years old. I'm sorry? She's nine years old. Nine, I, I'm sorry. Uh, she turned nine, I'm sorry. <laughs> But uh, Paul Paul knows. <laughs> but anyway, she's nine years old, and she's gotten she's tall for her age. She's she's about that tall. Yeah. She's nine years old. But anyway, uh, she's home with Mama today, and we only bring her when our nerves can handle. We can't handle her being because she is she's a live wire. She's you know bouncing. She's she's live wire, and yeah, like Kim, uh huh, and. Uh, so we bring her sometimes and take some Xanax and roll on. Uh, but uh, anyway, that, uh, that I love to sing with them and all that. Uh, they, they uh, boy, they, they have so much going on in their lives. I mean, I wish I knew how much fuel that we burn up taking them to, uh, of course, Molly and Samuel down here. They both drive now, and that, that's great. Uh, we can run them down and get some milk or whatever else, you know. But uh, we burn the roads up with, uh, between the vehicles that we have and all that stuff. But anyway, uh, at, in a few minutes, I'll give our family testimony. But right now, I want Catherine and Molly to sing a song that Charlotte normally sings when she's with us. With us. And uh, they know how to fill in when somebody's gone. So I want them to sing this song.
kind of nostalgic when I get around uh, people that hurt us years ago. Uh, of course, we go back with the Crawfords back to the early 70s. And then we got the Stokes back there that go back uh, about 40 years. And so uh, I'm going to tell one of our road stories, which I enjoy telling it. It's, fun. it's, it's funny. It's funny. And uh, so then after that, I'll give a little testimony. And uh, I, I want to hear him sing that song. Bro. What song? Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll get him to sing that. <clears throat> he said that uh, Paul so unprejudiced. He, he has no bias at all. He, totally, totally uh, objective. And, no, he, you know, I, that's complete sarcasm. He wants to hear a certain song by his grandkids. Uh, <laughs> uh, but we, back years ago, the Crawfords have heard this, but back years ago, we were, we were singing Oklahoma City. And I was about 17 years old, and I'm 56 now, so this was a long time ago. And uh, we, we traveled, and we thought we were big time. We had us a Greyhound bus, and if you have a bus, say you're big time. That's all. Yeah. So, so we had us a Greyhound bus, and we were out in Oklahoma, and, and uh, we were singing a church that was about half the size of this church, and they had a little bitty foyer. And so we sang, and, and they got over with, and it was, it was filled up, not hard to fill up that auditorium. And so everybody just packed into the, the little foyer there, and I was standing by the, the record table, and the, the, the children that are here, they may not know what records are, but I was standing by the record table, and, and this young uh, lady came up about my age, and she said, I sure enjoyed your singing. I said, thank you. And she said, uh, she just kept staring at me, and she said, she said, I'd like to go on a date sometime. And, uh, so I said, I said, whoa, you know, and, and I said, uh, I said, well, you know, I live in Louisiana and I said, it's, it's a long way from Oklahoma City. And I said, uh, I, I don't think it would work, you know. And, and then she just stopped and he just stared like that. She said, well, I'd like to sing and travel with y'all. And uh, so, so I, uh, I said, well, my dad has always kept it in the family. You know, I said, uh, okay, where is that coming from? Anyway, I said, my, my dad has always kept it in the family. And, and uh, you know, that's just the way that way. She said, well, I can handle that. She said. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I said, uh, I said, in my mind, I was like, whoa, you know, I said, I said, I got to get out of here. And so our bus was parked. Our bar, what? <laughs> Our bus was parked on the side of the church, and and uh, she turned around real, and I just darted out the front door while she wasn't looking, and I ran around to the bus. Well, my brother had just gone on the bus, and I knew that if they if they knocked on the bus, he would tell them that I was on the bus. So I said, I can't go on the bus. So I went I went back into the back door of the church. And, and uh, they had the, the single restrooms, you know. And, and I went in there and, and locked the door. <laughs> and, well, there was, there was probably about 80, about 80 people there that night. And uh, people kept knocking on the door, you know. And I, just a minute, just a minute. I'm going, just a minute. Just. <laughs> there were no men that used the restroom after church that night. And so... Uh, finally, uh, after I waited a long time, I couldn't hear anything but, but the uh, preacher and my dad talking. That was it. And so uh, I unlocked the door and opened it. She was standing right there, and she said, There you are! <laughs> and she, oh, my goodness. That was, and people wonder why I didn't get married until I was 37. And, and <laughs> I wish my wife was here. She she, uh, you know, you can understand how she would appreciate that story. Uh, she, she, she found out that married to a singer ain't the greatest thing, you know. But anyway, uh, uh, my, the Crawfords know my wife, and, and she's a lovable person. Amen. Everybody everybody likes my wife. Amen. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, let's, get, let's get the kids to sing uh, this song, and then, I'll, and then I'll give a testimony and then, uh, let me see, let's see how we do it. No, after the song, then the women can go and get the food ready, okay? Because <laughs> the 
brother comment back there. He told me, <laughs> Bill Haley in the comments. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he, he told me to, now see, you got to be, you got to be into old music to know that. Because we're talking, we're talking the early to mid fifties right there. Uh, I don't listen to that much of that stuff. I just happen to, <laughs> I just happen to know. I got an old daddy, so. Uh, oh, okay. She got to get a key on the piano, and then, and then they're going to sing. What's the name of that song? I call him Lord. Okay. And um, we had a group that did this song. You know, y'all know the Collingsworths. Well, they do that song. And my kids said, oh, we like that song. I said, I've been listening to that song for 50 years. I said, the Rambo, Dottie Rambo wrote that thing back in the early 70s. And the Collinsworth, they did it a big production. They probably spent $25,000 on, on that one song. And I told Jennifer, my wife, I said, we need to do that song a cappella. I said, I don't want all that stuff distracting. I said, I want just pure vocal sound. Amen. It just, that's it. So that's the way they're going to do it. Amen. Y'all got that picture. <clears throat> Master Redeemer, Savior of the world, wonderful counselor, bright morning.
that need to get stuff ready, they can do that. I'm just going to give a testimony and sing one more song. Uh, you know, I don't like to go anywhere without telling what the Lord's done for us. Amen. Uh, Amen. You know, we live in an age where, you know, the Bible says that men shall be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. And, uh, you know, nowadays uh, you have to have entertainment to do just about everything, you know. Entertainment is is a god, <laughs> and you know uh, everything's got to be fun and entertaining. If it's not, nobody wants to do it, yeah. you know. Um, but I feel like that it's it's our responsibility to 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 tell you what the Lord has done for us because we're not just entertainers. Uh, we are people that the Lord has has um, saved, Amen. and that and that the Lord has commissioned and, and given us the opportunity. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, uh, I guess the Crawfords have, have heard our testimony, I think. Uh, um, but, you know, mom and daddy, daddy was in the military and he met mama in Spokane, Washington. Uh, mama was from up there, up there in, um, close to Spokane. And mama came from a home where she was married eight, I mean, her mama was married eight times and was an alcoholic. And a terrible home life, a lot of abuse, a lot of alcoholism, agnosticism, in other words. They had, had nothing to do with God at all. They lived as atheists, basically. And, and uh, some of y'all are thinking, well, what, what was your dad? What was he at that time? <laughs> well, I tell you what he was. He was a backslidden saved person is what he was. Right. He was in the military and he had been saved as a teenager and got away from God. And, and uh, so anyway, ended up marrying a, a lost person, my mother, and they moved on down to Alexandria. Um, it was a whole new world for my mother. Now she was, I'm sure she was happy to get away from Spokane, but she got down there and one of the first meals they had, she cooked uh, shrimp and they were eating them and it was all crunchy and all that. And, <laughs> And Daddy, Daddy said, "Did you shell these shrimps?" She said, "No, I didn't know you're supposed to do that." <laughs> so, some good crunchy shrimp. Oh man! Then she got introduced to the flying roaches, you know, uh, <laughs> and a lot of other stuff. Uh, but anyway, uh, my goodness, with her emotional problems. And, and daddy, daddy back then, and he, he's sitting right here, he knows this is all true, but back then he was like a 12 year old in a, in a 19 year old body, you know? And, and in other words, just immature and, and all that. And uh, so my dad has a up personality, you know, encouraging people. And you, you can see why my mother would be drawn to that coming from the home life that she had. Daddy was a, was a fun, good time, positive type of guy, you know. And But they hadn't been married too long before their marriage and everything started falling apart because he had a lot of problems. She had a lot. She had more problems than he did. And she, I don't think Daddy had any idea how bad her emotions were when he married her. And she attempted suicide many times uh, because of the abuses. She grew up as a girl and, and um, it's amazing, Miss Ruth, that they stayed together all the way to the end. You know, that's God's grace, you know. Amen. It's God. Amen. But anyway, um, pastor came, visited them, asked them to church, and they uh, committed their lives to the Lord. And my Amen. mom my mom began to write gospel songs, Amen. tell them what God had done for her. Amen. And... Uh, uh, we began to sing those songs back there on that record. Amen. She wrote, uh, Passing Through, He's Coming Any Day, Only Because of His Grace. Amen. Off of that record, I, I might be missing one of them. <laughs> John Saw City, yeah, mm. on that record, right? She, and she wrote a lot of great songs. Right. Uh, and she kept saying, we kept singing and traveling and church to church. And when she was 52, she began to experience some extreme weakness. I remember we were traveling in Tennessee and she began to, she was just so weak, she could hardly go. And we had her checked out and kind of found out she had had acute leukemia and we didn't know it. 
And it, the doctor, we took her and the doctor said, you know, so we're gonna do what we can, but she probably only has a few months to live. And, uh, and so that's the way it was. She had a few months to live. And, and she, she sang with us all the way up until she was physically unable. She, she passed away in July of, of 90. She sang all the way through June. Uh, Amen. Amen. And we'd have to help her up on the stage and, and back down and all that. And she kept singing. Um, and when she got the news that she was going to die, she wrote a song called Heaven's Calling Me. Amen. And uh, I like to sing this song everywhere I go. And I like to tell the story before I sing it. Without the story, it doesn't mean nearly as much. But she wrote about the sites that we have down here in the United, we have in, in, in Louisiana. We have the moss, we have the cotton fields, and the bayous. Then out west, we've got the mountains and the meadows and all that. She said, all that's pretty, but heaven is calling me. Amen. Cotton fields, moss hanging from the trees. By use flowing by so peacefully. Beautiful for the eyes to see. But it's not heaven, and heaven's calling me. Mountain peaks and meadows, lush and green. Everywhere God's beauty can be seen. God is good and gives my heart a song. But it's not heaven. And here I don't belong. Someday soon I know I'll be going home. I feel deep down it could be any day. I'll hear him call my name. My heart with joy will sing. I'll say goodbye. I hear them calling me from that land where I long to be. Tears are gone and hearts are young and free. Heaven's land is still calling me. Someday soon I know could be any day I'll hear him call my name my heart with joy will sing I'll say goodbye then I'll fly away cotton fields moss hanging from the trees by use flowing by peacefully beautiful for the eyes to see but it's not heaven and heaven's calling me no it's not heaven and heaven is calling I do right 